Uh, we've seen these things before, but they continue to want to fight us. Well, we better show them a thing or two. And there we go. So as I said in the last episode, wait, what's this? Oh, this is how we got in the room. Thought it was some kind of secret. No, do you see any door here? No. So how do you get in the room? Through there. And now we're at our next uh, save station. Oh, God. I don't know. This LP so far is just, here's what I think. I think as far as a walkthrough for the game, it's going well. As far as a let's play, it's not very good. Because I don't think my commentary, at least for the last couple of episodes, has been very good at all, but... Dang. So now we have our next boss, the security drones. Uh, the only way to kill these guys is when they're shooting at you, you have to hit them where their laser source is. Now, that doesn't make much sense at all, but, you know, that's just the way it is. God, stop hitting me. Oh! Now, this is a point where the sense move can come in handy. Now, the enemies in this game can be real dicks. They're just so unpredictable, and not even these ones so much, although these ones can be, you know, definitely. There's a later one that's just in my mind, and I'm not so much looking forward to that one. The good news about this fight is that they gave us a, a save station right before, so we're at full health. And this is a, one of the rare points in the game where the lock, automatic lock-on can actually hurt you if you hit the wrong one. Okay, we got one of them down, another one down, and guess what? Another one comes in. Yeah, couldn't forget about that now, could you? Except I did. So, to compare this to my uh, first LP... The commentary in my first LP actually wasn't that bad, if you like seeing me get pissed off. But, I don't know, if, if I'm not getting pissed off, is there really anything much to the game? Okay, you know what, the game's gonna get harder, and once the game's getting harder, I'm gonna be pissed off, but, you know, I'm, at least it's gonna be for a good reason, and it's gonna be a bit more respectable, and I won't, it won't be happening this soon in the game. So then it'll be, okay, I'm ready for it, okay game, I'm ready. I just don't really know this game as well, still. I know it enough to play it, but not enough to go on what Attacking Toucans calls autopilot mode. And now we have one of the few weapon, the one of the few things, details unknown, that you actually pick up rather than have authorized to you. And that's because, well, it's a new thing. It's not something that Samus has had in another game. It's a new beam altogether, the diffusion beam, and it's very cool. This is what I was talking about when I said an item we're going to get really soon and I can really use it. Um, the diffusion beam will kill anything around what the charge beam hits, and that is awesome. Ah! Oh, get away from me. And yeah, if you see, if you didn't have it here, even if you do have it, I'm still getting my ass handed to me. Now, why is there a video of the save room? Well, actually, we're going to see why. It actually makes perfect sense. Because it's actually the room we saw earlier. See the little hole we blew up? Was someone watching as we did that? That's kind of weird to think about, that when someone's watching you. That is weird. That really is weird, actually. To think that someone could be, you know, in here watching you. Like, 
I don't know. It kind of reminds me of that uh, Alex Ryder book, Point Blank. Dang. Like I said, I think this game gets a lot better uh, as it goes on. I really like games like that. Oh, but this is going to be the mini-boss episode. We already had two, and now we come up on a third, and it's not going to be the last. So we have some worms. Like, I pretty much... Whenever I'm picturing myself doing commentary here, I always think of myself being the guy that says giant enemy crap. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. That's what I think of myself. So here we have uh, worms. You can uh, shoot it with a missile. And that does a lot of damage, but... When you, when you don't shoot it with a missile, you're really not going to do that much. But see, you, you hit it, you know, lock on right there, and there you go. You're going to do a lot of damage. Massive damage. I didn't want to, you know, absolutely copy it, but there you go. Ah. Now, you want to dodge its attacks. Because when the attacks hit you, it's bad. You see, we kind of thought this over as we were designing the game because, well, that's what game designers do before a game. We, we have to think everything over. But we decided that when things hit you, your character should actually get hurt. Now, we, we thought it might be a little too gruesome to have, you know, your character actually get hurt, but, well, eventually we decided that it had to happen, so you guys can all test your skills by dodging those things, and then once you do that, then, well, then you can hit it, and then, remember, defense is the best offense. So yeah, okay, this reminds me of the Pokemon Maywile, is it just me? I'm sure it's not, and is it Maywile or Mawile? Now I want to check the map here, this part got me really confused in the LP, this is the last part of the LP, the little off screen I was doing this, because I just absolutely could not figure out where to go at this point. Oh god, see how it's putting between 1 and 0? That means we're about to die. And that means that we have to get somewhere safe. Oh, thank god that the things didn't respawn. I don't think the hives respawn. And it's a good thing, too. So now we can get out. So we got to do a little backtracking. When compared to other Metroid games, there's not that much backtracking in this game. This isn't really backtracking. Since it gave us a shortcut, now we pretty much just have to go the same way we did before, again. An ironic thing is I'm pretty sure that the giant enemy crab that kind of used Metroid as an example is one of the first games that did the seemingly revolutionary, you know, a boss having a weak point. I've always wondered if that game was actually good. I can't even remember the name of it. So yeah, as you can see, it's not hard to get here at all. I think I was trying to, like, go back the other way for some reason. I don't even know what I was doing. I don't know what who he was doing. Uh, so yeah, we got the final four now. That's something to talk about. Who do y'all think will win? Uh, I think it's going to be Louisville. They're just so much better than all the other teams, I feel. Although... Syracuse played really good defense against uh, Marquette with that zone. <laughs> I feel so out of it right now. I don't know why. Like, I'm finding it really hard to commentate right now. Maybe I have Lavender Town Syndrome. 
I actually just researched that as well. Yeah. With all the spare time I have. No, I always seem to be the person that, you know, figures out these things really late. Like, before everyone else does. Like, I just, you know, find out what Lavender Town, what's so special about it. And now I just kind of became really interested in it. And I have it stuck in my head now. You know, it's really funny about Lavender Town. It's like, I like the music, you know, just from, you know, when I put it in Heart, Gold, and Soul, Silver, like, without even knowing. Like, I was just naive. And, you know, I didn't even know. I'm like, this is a nice song. I know, like, they actually kind of made it happy sounding for Heart, Gold, and Soul, Silver. But, like, I kind of liked the song. And I, I had it stuck in my head even then. Like, and without even knowing the, the significance of it. So, oh, another armadillo. That's another theme of this game. You're going to have these enemies that kind of pop out out of nowhere, and you got to beat it. Now, I don't know the names of these enemies that well. It's going to be another one of those games where I can't really say the names of the enemies that well. Now, I'll know the Metroids. When we come to the Metroids, I'll, I'll know what those are. You might as well, you know. I know the War Wasp is. That's a Metroid enemy that's been around for a while. And, well, I hope you like them because, well, you'll find out pretty soon. You know, a lot of these enemies seem like the ones in Metroid Prime. Isn't that the, uh, the Sporb? Hmm. Uh, I'm calling it the Sporb. I'd rather call it an actual enemy name, even if it's the wrong one, than just call it the uh, spewing flower thingy. I think whenever you have to put thingy at the end of a name, it's not a very good name. Unless that's actually what it's called. <laughs> no, no. Okay, luckily, it doesn't throw you all the way down. So, they're not really that hard to kill. So, get all the way to the top, and then fall. And remember when I said I hope you like war wasps? We're about to find out why. Wait, where am I supposed to be looking at? You don't even know where you're supposed to be looking at here, but you just know you're supposed to be looking at something, so... Let's inspect. Ooh, I saw something over there. Samus, those are bad guys. Just kill them. Shoot! Is your gun out of ammo or something? Yeah! We have a war wasp pod. A big one. And bigger war wasps as well. And they get one of the cheapest hits of all time. You know, right up there with the Mingi Jongo first hit and the first hit by the Goomba Brothers in Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. Not to be confused with the Goomba Brothers at King Goomba's Fortress, the ones in Blitzville. Okay, now that's not really that cheap because it can actually work against it if you super guard it. Joke's on you! <sighs> okay, you know what? That catchphrase was stupid. I had a lot of stupid catchphrases. Like, do I even have any that are good? I fell through the floor. That's kind of stupid, too. But none was more stupider than pump that head with some lead. I mean, first of all, I acted like it was like something original one. I'm sure it wasn't. This kind of feels like a Zelda boss, kind of. Like, almost like a Kaladinos kind of thing. You know, where you... I don't know, just this whole thing does kind of remind me of Kaladinos. So, you kill the war wasps, or giant war wasps, or whatever they are. And the diffusion beam helps a lot. Not like there was any way you could not have... I'll actually... Maybe... 
Now, because you do need the missiles, there's no point in doing that sense move charge. I think it's possible to kill more than one of them. Now, remember in Skyward Sword, I didn't actually mention this, but it's something I think is cool. How when you're in first person with the arrows, you don't take any knockback from the hit. Like, well, maybe you'll take knockback, but like, it doesn't take you out of the animation. Or, out of first person. So that... Oh, and that's really cool. Did you notice that? When you get one of those to the ground, you can literally go on there and rip its wings off. That is cruel, but... I mean, killing it is one thing, but just doing that first, it just seems like, well, like, does that hurt? Like, I'm going to do it again, because I think it's really cool to just, like, snap its wings off. Cool and cruel. Okay. Come on. Oh. Yeah, sometimes the game... Yeah, there you go. You know, that's what you get. Oh, jeez. Like, what's the point? It's on the ground. It's already injured. Can't you just kill it then? I mean, I know they're all easier to kill when they're on the ground. I could probably still get that thing even now, but I'm not going to go for it. Oh! And just so you know, this is as far as I got in my first LP. And that means that it's the very last time that I will be mentioning my first LP. No, 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 no. All right. And... Well, now we got the queen to deal with. She was all protected, but... There's nowhere for you to hide now. Well, I guess you do have your little things protecting you, but... Oh, jeez. Oh, shoot. No, no, no. Not now. Not now. Please, after I did so well in this fight, it's given me so much trouble before. I'm getting in trouble now. No, I'm not even going to try to... Okay, okay. Maybe I will try. I'll go in the most... Uh... Yes! Now that is when it's, you know, when concentrating can get, you know, fun. Like when you're... Yeah, alright. Probably could have done it, but I decided not to. And much like the Twilight Princess LP, we go into new territory. Although this time, instead of it being part... 90, it's part 7. It's part six right now, but it's part seven next video. Some creatures use the powers of others to capture their prey. Watching this disgusting beast, I felt as though I was feeding off the empire of the world. At the same time, a thought crossed my mind. That howl I heard earlier, could this creature have been the source? Hmm, that's very interesting. Because the first time we saw this creature, it was all cute. Now it's still kind of cute, but it's got sharp teeth, and it's eating the remains. And now the game is going to get good. Not like it wasn't already, but now I think it's going to get really good. Ironically... I kind of like the game better when you're, like, interacting with the other people. I don't know. It's actually one of my favorite parts about it. So, we have something there. What is that? Energy part. Hmm. Eh, I guess we can get this in this video, because you're all curious about it. It's not that hard. Just bomb this, and then go up here. And... That's your energy part. And since there's no... Uh... Recharge station nearby. At least not that I can think of. Oh, yeah, there is. There's one right there. Uh, I still want to record some more, though. I'm having so much fun. Okay, but this video is going to have to end. So I will see you guys in the next one.
where we will head over to the Biosphere Test Center and see what waits for us there. Wait, what's here? Oh, I think I know where that is. That actually, um, that actually goes back to that big room with this whole spiral thing. Remember the way I said, oh, I'm not going to go this way because I don't think you're supposed to go this way now? That's where that goes. It's a little shortcut. Uh, bye.